Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. I appreciate you guys stopping by. Thank you very much. Um, this is a trip that I took out on Lake Sammamish once again, and I'm bass fishing, trying to catch large smallmouth for a monthly tournament. And um, I've been through like 12 or no, like two dozen docks at this point and hadn't caught anything. And here I catch this little rock bass, but I'm sparing you the, the, the dock montage just, just because you've seen that before. And this is yet another day where I just have to keep soldiering on until I find a spot that has fish. And several docks later, I hooked into this fish and I thought, oh, this is a nice fish right here. Um, and uh, as I got into the boat, I realized that it was just another rock bass. It just happened to be a very, a much bigger one. Um, these guys are a lot of fun to catch. I grew up in upstate New York, and uh, we would catch these by the dozens. You know, you'd probably catch uh, 20 or 30 of these in between each smallmouth that you caught. Um, so I would recommend that if you, uh, if you can, eat these. They're good eating. <laughs> So, yeah, after another probably two to three dozen docks, um, I finally came across this set of docks right here, and I caught what um, I refer to as a dink. And it's shy of 12 inches, probably an 11-inch fish, but it's a smallmouth, and it's the first one I've caught today. And so I'm pretty happy with this because it's usually an indication that I'm in the right area, at least, that there that there's a chance there's some more smallmouth around. So I included this clip because this dock right here that I'm fishing, um, it, it looked really good. And as I was fishing it, um, I noticed that a smallmouth came up and swirled on some bait fish that were hanging out right around the one of the uh, pilings of that dock. And I, I'm fishing a, a magnum sized um, wacky worm here. Generally, I had almost every single one of my rods, except for my jig rod there, has some sort of worm on it. <laughs> and I'm trying to see if, uh, if um, one particular worm rigging works better than another on, on different days. I'm just doing some experimenting here, and right now I'm fishing a magnum worm, and I'm not, I'm not getting any bites with it. And I switch between that and a wacky worm and several other things, none of which is actually working. This fish is just not interested in any of these worm presentations that I'm, that I'm offering. But I know that fish is there, and I'm going to file that away. And later on in the video here, you'll get to see how. Um, I approach it the next time I come by this dock. Also, I want you to take note of this tree right here. Same tree. And what I noticed is right there in about three feet of water, there's a modest sized fish. I'm guessing it was probably 14 to 16 inch, somewhere in there. Not a monster, but you know, it was a largemouth bass and it was sitting on a bed. Well, this is well past when everything else has spawned out. So I think that that poor little bass was, just, was wishful thinking. He was very hopeful that some um, sweet looking thing might come by and, and join him in that bed. But, uh, he was not interested in anything that I threw at him. And in fact, he typically swam off when I pulled a lure through the bed. So he wasn't committed to it all, all that strongly. And at some point here, I turn around and I look behind me and there is three other bass, all decent sized bass. The, um, you know, I'm guessing in the 17 to 19 inch range, they're a decent sized bass. And they're all sitting there staring at me. And then when I see that I'm looking at them, they, they just swam off. And quite comical. You know, and of course, I tried throwing the wacky worm at them and stuff. And the, they were showed no interest whatsoever. They just sort of swam, swam off. And, but it did tell me that I was in the right place now, that I finally had found some fish that, uh, that were worthwhile fishing for. Yeah, it's always helpful when you can visually confirm that there's fish in the area that you're fishing in. It really helps with morale. <laughs> 
Now, between the time when I caught that dink and the 20 minutes that I spent trying to catch that smallmouth under the dock and then this one that was on the bed, I've been here for 45 minutes to an hour and haven't caught anything. And there's only about four or five docks in this general area. Uh, but I moved on and I went to the next dock and tossed this uh, wacky worm under there. And man, it, it, the, my line took off almost instantly, which is a nice sign. So it set the hook and uh, yeah, we got a fish on. One of the fun things about fishing in a kayak is you, you're always having to deal with uh, um, boat placement here because, you know, any little pull on the, on the line will move the boat around. Um, and so I would have rammed right into that dock had I not sat down and started pedaling backwards. But uh, all is well. We got the fish netted and uh, it's a nice largemouth. Now, some of this footage is going to look familiar to you guys because uh, I did a short of this. And it's, this was really quite amazing to me. <laughs> I was kind of surprised at what was going on here. Uh, so I pulled that, uh, that wacky worm out, and I'm, I'm thinking at this point I'll just start measuring them. And then I realized that there's, a, there's actually another line coming out of this fish's face. And I'm like, what the heck is this? And it turns out it was, a, it was another hook that was down in this fish's gullet but the, the line had obviously broke off so this people had been fishing for this fish for a while uh <laughs> and uh he seems to have uh managed to evade capture to this point uh <laughs> so that line is broken off so i get my trusty pliers out and i'm going to do the uh through the gill method here of removing that hook from the fish's uh, stomach <clears throat> and it goes it goes relatively smoothly here you can see how quickly I got that hook out of the out of its stomach there. And what I realized is that there was still a wacky worm that had been connected to that hook. So I pulled that out. And then when I looked down in there, I was like, well, what in the heck is that? And I pull, you know, so I get my pliers out and I, I pull another Sanko out of there. So that fish had two Sankos in its stomach, another hook when it bit my line. <laughs> so... Um, that was quite an aggressive fish and you can see he's been eating well. He's got a nice tummy on him. So, uh, pretty excited about that. This is a, this is a pretty nice fish. You know, moving all, removing all that hardware and plastic from that fish's stomach, I think is just a really good thing. And if you think that was a good thing as well, uh, now might be a great time to give this video a like. I really would appreciate it. And then, hey, if you stick around to the end of the video here, I'll do a review of all the things that I learned in this uh, adventure. And hopefully that'll help you guys on the next time you go out bass fishing. Now, the frustrating thing is that after I caught this fish, I could see another largemouth, at least one other largemouth, was hanging out underneath that dock in a different section of the dock. And I cast into that fish for 10 or 15 more minutes and just he just would not respond to anything that I threw at him. So I moved on, of course. So 15 or 20 docks later, I hadn't gotten any additional bites. It all looked pretty good, but I just wasn't catching any fish. So I thought, well, now's the time to go back and hit that, uh, that dock up that had the smallmouth under it that was feeding on bait fish uh, near the pylon. So I worked my way back there and I put on a little paddle tail and like a micro paddle tail. It was like two and a half inch paddle tail. And I casted it way up underneath that dock. And as it was coming out, I saw this dark shadow moving in behind it. And sure enough, that fish came out and hammered that little paddle tail. Uh, and this is a pretty decent smallmouth right here. You can tell that uh, uh, they, they've been spawning because her tail is just all messed up. Okay, we just got a nice smallmouth here. <laughs> Yeah, that's why we came out here. It was to get smallmouth. And I caught a, uh, I forgot to turn the camera on, but I caught a 18-inch uh, largemouth too, which was quite nice. I don't know if she's going to help me because it needs to be bigger than 18 and a quarter. But we will see. Well, let's 
that big. I don't think we are, but oh, yeah, we're 18 and three quarters. Well, that was a slight miscalculation on my part. This fish only went 18 and a half inches, but that's a really nice smallmouth. And at the time, that was one of the uh, leaders in the clubhouse for my for my tournament. Sorry about that. I need to be a little bit better with my hero shots. <laughs> oh man, this fish doesn't look good right here. She's kind of bellying up and not and not taking off like you kind of would expect. Uh, but I usually give them a couple seconds here to to uh, try to figure it out. And if, if she doesn't take off, I'll have to give her some help. So I just uh, flipped her up on her on her belly with the net, and she instantly kicked off and dove for the bottom. So she looked good. So at this point, I've been through probably 50 docks and about four and a half hours worth of fishing, maybe five hours worth of fishing, and I only caught those two fish. So. Well, to keeper fish, uh, I did catch some rock bass and some perch and this uh, smaller smallmouth, but uh, that's not a really good return on investment. So I'm heading the other side of the lake to see if I can uh, see if I can find any fish over there. From the other side of the lake, uh, I fished probably five or ten docks, and then there's this section right here on this part of the lake that has a little bump out. Um, I wouldn't call it a point, you know, it's a very mild bump out there, but it seems to hold fish pretty consistently. So I always uh, fish it here. And the funny thing is that I was tossing a wacky worm in 15 to 20 feet of water. I just tossed it out there and let it sink and um, caught this fish. Well, I'll be gosh darned, caught another one. I think this is another 17 and a half sort of thing, but we'll check him. It's a nice fish. Uh, yeah, another. 18 and a quarter-ish. I'll take a picture of them, but I don't think it's going to help at all. All right, I'm going to measure this fish, but even though I don't think it's going to help, but I want you to notice that the mouth is open, which would be a quarter-inch or half-inch deduction, and so that fish would not help me at all. I was getting towards the end of the day, so I was out trolling. And as soon as I put the rod in the rod holder, I got a hit. And then I couldn't get it back out again. Felt like a really good fish. He got something on. Oh, my. Something of size. I had a hard time getting the rod out of the rod holder. Nice smallmouth. Oh, he's got hooked, that's why. Come here, buddy. Let's get that off of you. Come here. Uh. Whew, that's a nice fish. Guess he wasn't got hooked. He just, uh, That's a nice fish. Not big enough to measure, but a nice fish. Got me excited there for a second. All right, let's just try again. It's like four o'clock and I'm just trolling back to the to the launch and go home. Sadly, that was the last fish that I caught uh, trolling back to the dock. Um, I fell, I only, that was my fourth fish, my fourth keeper fish. So I fell a little bit short of my five fish goal. I like to get five fish because that's what indicates that I could potentially be competitive in tournaments. And so that's my goal every time I go out is try to catch five fish. 
as is often the case, um, I just wasn't around the fish for a large portion of the day. So for the first three hours, um, I wasn't around the fish. And so it wasn't until I got to those four docks that I really started to, to catch some fish. And that's, that's the lesson. That's a takeaway here is you need to be around the fish. It's not typically a problem with the color of your lure or the technique you're using. Um, if you're, confident in what you're doing you just need to find the fish and in this case it took me a lot longer than probably it should have so that's uh that's the takeaway here is you know spend your time uh efficiently to to locate the fish and then once you find the fish uh that's when you want to change up your techniques until you you find something that works best all right, that's all I got for you for today. I appreciate you guys stopping by. If you haven't already, please like the, the video and subscribe. And uh, we'll see you on the next video. Thank you very much.